Hey, what's up guys? Kai here, and welcome back to the No Magicite Challenge Run for Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. In between episodes, I made my way back here to Miranda, and I also rearranged my party a little bit for the next area that we'll be going to. Mainly, I brought in Strago because he'll be learning a new blue magic, and I brought Gogo along because I don't have the spells that I normally do, so I'll be using alternative methods in order to get the same results. And I brought Cyan along because I need a sprint shoe slut. And it's also time for him to put down the hentai and confront Lola. So let's do that. Yeah, that is true. I mean, his kingdom was destroyed, his family was murdered, his friends were murdered. What's up, Cyan? Hmm, I wonder why he chose to remain anonymous. Hmm. Well, anyways, there you go, viewers. There is life after love after all. But before we leave here, let's talk to this guy. Whoa, that place sounds dangerous. And I also want to come talk to this guy over here, who's running around like an idiot. Hey, stop it. There we go. To the right of the treasure chest. Hmm, I wonder what that means. It's awfully vague. Well, remember that for later, viewers. Also, since last time, I went ahead and made a side trip back to another village and stopped up on a few things like Phoenix Downs, uh, Remedies, things like that. Okay, since it's on the way, I do want to make a pit stop here at the Cult of Kefka's Tower. How about no? That is absurdly overpriced, and if you do pay that, he just tells you that there's a castle beneath Figaro Castle, and that someone in Narsh is looking for us. Anyways, this will be a quick trip. I just want to come up here to the first treasure room and pick up something. Here we get a safety bit. This accessory will protect you against instant death spells. Keep in mind though, it does not protect you against physical attacks that inflict instant death. Those will still kill you. But anyways, to the right of this box... Did you hear that? is a hidden switch. Now, I don't know how you're supposed to figure that out, but, well, there you are, guys. Opens up a secret treasure room down here, which contains the Air Anchor, the final tool for Edgar. It is really good. Basically, what it does is it will instantly kill any enemy after they take their next action. Guaranteed. Of that is, of course, if they're not immune to instant. So if you don't mind waiting an extra turn to kill an enemy instead of wasting MP trying to cast Doom or Exone over and over, well, there you go. Okay, now let's get to where we wanted to go, and that is Doma Castle. See how things are going around here. By the way, you have to have Cyan in your party in order to do this next part. Actually, yeah, I'm a little tired. Let's take a nap real quick. Plus, I think Strago was low on MP for whatever reason. Cyan, hey, wake up, man. We have a world to save. What the? You know what that music means, viewers. Things are about to get weird. Curly, Larry, and Mo. Dream Stooges. Really, Woolsey? That's where you took that? I... What do you mean? Wonder if they're gonna dine on turtle soup. Oh, 
Oh man, it gave me Strago again? I think that happened last time I LP'd this game. <laughs> and holy hell, what happened to Gogo's colors? I have never brought Gogo here before. I have never seen that glitch. Anyways, want to give Strago here a ribbon. And I recommend giving a ribbon to whichever character you're given. Because a few of the enemies here can inflict some really nasty status ailments. And it's just an extra precaution. Alright, door on the right will take you to the character on the right. Door on the left will take you to the character that you see on screen there. So I want to get... Hmm. You know what? Let's get Mog first. You little chicken shit. It was one on one. Alright, new enemies. Allosaurus and Parasites. Pretty easy here. Just go with a good arrow and that'll take them all out. I wonder why Ted Woolsey chose the Dream Stooges in his translation. I believe in the original Japanese text, each of their names was the word dream in a different language. I think that's pretty cool. No reason to censor that. Hey, hey, Strago gained a level. Nice. But whatever, that's Ted Woolsey for you. Alright, now that we have Mog around, I'm going to give him the Dragon Horn. There we go. I actually want to fight the enemies here because the experience is a little bit better than the last dungeon. And, like I said, I want to learn a new blue magic for Strago. Ah, there we are. The Critic. Okay, to learn this blue magic, all we have to do is sit around and wait for them to cast it. Sorry, Mog. I suppose I could do some single target damage on these guys. Actually, you know what? This is not the best battle to learn this from. There are just too many enemies up there. So I am going to just wipe them out. Again, a good arrow should finish these guys off. You could also use Clean Sweep here. Remember, it is water elemental and does not suffer from split damage. You could also learn Roulette from the enemy on the bottom there. Oops. Where are my antidotes? If I even have any. Alright, well, it's a good thing I stocked up on some remedies there. Hey, Gogo. -Go. <laughs> Are you still jacked up? No? No? Okay. Well, anyways, now that we have Gogo back, I want to give him some skills here. I'm going to go with Tools, Rage, and Throw. Yep, that should be good. Okay, now let's get out of this part of the Dream World here. Man, this place is trippy looking. What is it with Dream Worlds and always being so trippy? Is that like a standard thing for Dream Worlds and these RPGs? Alright. Alright, got him. You know, if the place isn't trippy, it's just really damned annoying. Like, Loka's, Loka's Dream, blah blah blah, don't know why I can't pronounce her name, in Wild Arms 2. Those dream worlds, oh man, I hated those. Ah, here we go. This is a better battle formation to learn the blue magic I'm looking for. Safety bit would be a good idea here. Oh yeah, especially because Strago just died. And I actually need him alive to learn the blue magic. Thankfully, in this game, I don't have to get hit by it. Strago just has to be alive to witness it in battle. Okay, you know what? Oh, Mog is asleep. I was like, wait a minute, why is Strago still dead? Aw, oh, really? 
Oh, game, you're going to make this very difficult for me, aren't you? Okay, I'll just do this off screen and I'll bring you back when they actually cast the blue magic I'm looking for. So I'll be right back. There we go, guys. Level Unknown Pearl. Only took a few minutes for her to get that ability casted or used. Whatever. Unfortunately, Mog did have to sacrifice himself, but it's for the greater good. Learned Level Unknown Pearl. All right. Basically what that does is if the enemy has a level that's a multiple of the last digit of your gold, in this case mine is a three, then it deals holy elemental damage to them. You can also learn that by sketching the boss in the next dungeon that we'll be going to, if you don't want to learn it here. Okay, let's get healed up, because speaking of a boss fight, we have one coming up. Alright, let's put the Marvel Shoes on Gogo. He's going to be my biggest damage dealer here, and the auto haste is really good for him. Mog is still a Dragoon, and I still have the Ribbon on Strago. Okay, perfect. Now, looking at my equipment, Mog is the same as he was last time. Gogo is set up for... actually, let's do it this way. To have as much evasion as possible and magic power. Same with Strago, only I gave him the Force Shield so that he also has all of the elemental protection that he could ever want. And everyone is in the back row. So, here we go. Once you have all of your party members, we get to take on the Dream Stooges. Yeah, you already told us that. Let's get ready to rumble! Alright, so. First things first. Let's get Mog to jump in the air. And I want to use Sour Mouth on this guy in the back, because he is susceptible to Mute and Confusion. Now, I want to start throwing Ice Elemental weapons at this guy up top here. He is weak to Ice, and he is basically the healer of the group. Every time you kill one of his brothers, he will cast Life 2 immediately and bring them back. Thankfully, he is also susceptible to Slow, so we'll do that. Now, these guys have a triple tech called Delta Hit, and any of them can activate it. And basically what it does is it will petrify one of your party members. If you're silenced, however, they cannot use it. Or I should say they can't initiate it. So all you gotta do is do a little bit of crowd control and then take out the guy up top. Alright, now, once we've done that, you can just attack him. You can jump. And now we're going to use Air Anchor on the guy in the back, because he is also not immune to instant death. The only problem is, well, he's silenced. <laughs> so, gotta wait for him to do a regular attack on us now. You could also go with the X-Zone spell, or the Doom spell, those also work. Osteosaur Rage, if you brought Gaul with you. All right, got him. I guess Mute wore off. And there we go. That wasn't too bad. Is that the Phantom Train? What is this, a dream within a dream? We must go deeper. And there's a save point if we need it, but eh, we're fine. Let's, let's press onwards. Oh, hey, Cyan. <laughs> Looks like there's no escape. Ah, this room. I actually need sprint shoes for this one. Alright, in order to get that box there, you gotta hit the switch. And then run... Game? Alright, new enemies, Samurai and Rain Man. Now, the Samurai is weak to level 4 Flare, but because there's only one of them, I'm not going to waste the uh, MP on it. So let's just go with some AoE attacks to take these guys out. Samurai is level 40, but you can't use level 5 Doom because they're immune to instant death. Oh well.
Okay, so you just run over here, and you can make it... Game? There we go, and you get Genji Glove number two. Alright. Rain Man. No, it would have been better if they had some kind of mathematical attack or anything that involved numbers. Mel Gogo is really good. I just realized. Ah, <laughs> uh, that evasion. Okay, for this puzzle, well, first let's come over here and get a lump of metal. You need that in order to put in here. Otherwise, this moving box will just block your path over and over and over again. And here we get a flame shield. Awesome. Hitting this switch will show you the solution to the next puzzle. There is another new enemy here called the Surrey Ander that I would like to show you guys if I can. But if I don't do it on, on screen, I'll do it off screen. And if you run into him, you can also use level 4 flare. And it is weak to Holy, so Mog with the Holy Lance will pretty much just one-shot it. Alright, level ups all around. Oh yeah, this room. Got another puzzle here, but it's not too bad. You just have to move the switches, or activate the switches in a specific order, and if you just jack around with them, you'll get it on your own. It's not too complicated. We go hit this one. Umbrawler. Very clever game. Chill out there, Mog. Damn, talk about overkill. But you know what they say about overkill. When you need it, you don't have it. It's a sad day. Man, the encounter rate here is a lot higher than I remember. Alright, there we go. That wasn't too bad. Okay, this puzzle. So if you remember the pattern in the previous room, then this one should be relatively easy. You just have to close the treasure boxes to match the pattern, and then flip the switch. Actually... Bottom two, upper right, and that should be it. Alright, I'm going to call it quits here, guys. We've reached a pretty good stopping point. When we come back next time, we will continue making our way through Cyan's Nightmare and see if we can't save his soul from whatever it is is trying to swallow his soul. 
But until then, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Kai, and I'll see you next time.